Hi everyone, I'm Richard Aldridge. I'm the game director for Warhammer's new content team. I'm Mitchell Histi, I'm the lead designer on the Warhammer 3 new content team. Thank you very much for sending in all your questions, thoughts um, on Reddit, and today we're going to be taking you through a few of those and trying to give you some answers. Immortal Empires is our kind of grand vision of the entire Warhammer t trilogy, you know. Coming, coming together after many, many years of work across, across the team, across the studio. And in doing so, we've had to bring, obviously, games which are quite a few years old, um, up to date with Warhammer 3. So Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2, um, you know, all the content there that's been made over the last few years, it's not a simple case of just porting it across. Um, a lot of that stuff has to actually be reworked, rebuilt, refactored, and actually brought up to the standards that you're seeing in Warhammer 3. So again, why we're calling it a beta is because we need to allow for um, some little missteps, shall we say, you know, we're doing like a lighting pass on the various maps, we're going to be rebalancing all the units, all their stats, um, we're going to be doing uh, updates to the aesthetics, the visuals, so lots of different bits that um, will just generally get improved from Warhammer 1 and, and 2. And having a beta allows us for some of the little bits that, yeah, we might have missed along the way. But the beta absolutely lets you have the full experience, right? All the legendary laws are there, they're, they're all kicking ass and, you know, re re ready to be played. Um, you get to experience it all. Yeah, so right when we started Immortal Empires, this is something we thought kind of long and hard about. Um, so ultimately the answer is no. Um, we've not added it for Immortal Empires. Um, I think there was so much environment art that we needed to do just to get Immortal Empires done. Um, adding four unique realms, as cool as they are, I think was uh, yeah, a task that we didn't really want to undertake until we had a really good reason to do it. Um, I think it's also not quite as simple as people might think um, in terms of, you know, copy and pasting it over from the realms of chaos. Um, so if we are to do it, yeah, we need a really good reason to do it. It's something we're going to have to have a bit more of a think on. Um, we do have some room on the map, so yeah, it's a case of never say never. <laughs> um, I think you can never say it's final. Um, just look at Warhammer 2, right? Um, I think when we started that project, we knew we had a map and we knew we had races and areas of the world to paint in, but um, Warhammer 3 is going to be the same. It's going to be an ever-evolving, ever-changing uh, campaign. We know we're going to be adding loads of new content over the course of time for you to enjoy, so expect years worth of fantastic uh, experiences ahead, ahead. And I dare say we will change the map and who's in it and everything else along the way. So yeah, this is quite interesting because this is something we talked about, uh, talked about very early on in Immortal Empires. Um, we were throwing around the idea of adding the Dark Elf Watchtowers. Uh, I think to some extent the answer was made for us just because of the gigantic amount of uh, environment art that we needed to make for Immortal Empires. I think if we wanted to do the Dark Elf Watchtowers justice, we probably wanted to add some custom battle maps to go with them. Um, I think that was a little bit out of reach for Immortal Empires. Um, as cool as an idea as it would be. Uh, I think if we are going to do this, uh, we probably need to have a really good reason to do it. Um, and as the Chaos Invasion is gone in Immortal Empires, yeah, there's, there's even less of a reason to, to add them. But yeah, as you guys will have seen in the past, um, you know, we've added the Empire Forts in an update, so never say never. So when we first started planning out what Immortal Empires was going to be, um, we obviously went through all the different materials that Games Workshop had created over the years. Uh, we knew we, knew we were going to be adding Grand Cathay to the map, um, and we wanted to realise the world in its kind of entirety or as best as possible. Um, so obviously Grand Cathay is the lands to the south, which as you mentioned at Ind and uh, uh, Koresh, now they're going to be impassable territories for the f uh, foreseeable future. Um, you know, dense jungle and, you know, We'll see as time passes, but at the moment there's no plans to do anything else there. Um, but there's plenty of other parts of the world to go and explore and enjoy. So actually our first iteration of the sea lane mechanic that we've added, we did have um, events um, during your transition. 
I think ultimately when we played it and we kind of boiled down the mechanic to, you know, what, what is the, the main reason that we're adding this? Um, and I think based on, you know, past experiences as well, I think players, when they want to go somewhere, they just tend to want to get there. Um, so we, yeah, we're not going to release with any events for the, uh, the sea lanes. Um, that doesn't mean we won't do in future. Uh, I think this is one of the key areas that we're looking for feedback on, uh, mainly because it's a brand new mechanic in Immortal Empires. Um, so yeah, definitely looking to see what players think of what we've got and um, yeah, particularly, you know, how long they want the tr uh, transition times to be. Um, and yeah, if they, you know, if they're happy with the um, mechanic as it stands. So we've got an awful lot of content going into Immortal Empires. Um, I mean, numerous new factions have been added, so lots and lots of uh, things for the AI to do and for you to process and to uh, enjoy as you play. So they are longer. Um, that they are longer just because of the sheer weight weight of content. Um, but, you know, we are actively working on improving that and we will be doing so throughout the course of the beta as well. Yeah, so I think it's important to stress that when we talk about reworks for Immortal Empires, we don't really mean a rework in the traditional sense that you would have experienced in the past, the likes of which Beastmen, for example, was our last major rework. Uh, for Immortal Empires, we've tried to do quite a lot of little reworks, mini reworks. Uh, Norska is a good example of that. Um, so we've now changed them so they're a traditional, fully settled faction. Uh, Gone is the outdated outpost mechanic. Um, we've just tried to bring them up to speed for, for Warhammer 3. And, and really just uh, across the board for, for Immortal Empires, we've taken yeah, just a, a little bit of effort everywhere um, to try and bring a lot of things up to date instead of just focusing on one major rework. Yeah, so naturally Immortal Empires is huge. Uh, there's a lot of terrain uh, and there's a lot of settlements and there's a lot of opportunity for us to add landmarks. Um, so they are spread all across the world. Uh, I think with landmarks as well, these are these are things that we love adding in patches um, and future updates. Um, they're quite easy for us to add and we know that the community respond really well when we add them. Um, so yeah, you can definitely expect to see quite a lot in Immortal Empires uh, and yeah, going forward we'll add more as well. Uh, another interesting point um, on landmarks is that we spent quite a bit of work in Immortal Empires reworking the unique settlement system, uh, mostly behind the scenes in the data. And this is one of the most hated um, systems for designers. So we've completely redone it. And this means going forward now, we're much more capable of adding unique settlements, uh, which is really cool. Now we can add them, you know, all the way from yeah, Nagaron to Sarnagran to yeah, the eastern coast of Cathay. So um, look forward to that in the future. Yeah, so music wise, um, in Warhammer 3, we actually introduced an ambient uh, music generator. And that actually allows us to, in a campaign, real time to uh, put tracks together and, uh, and change what, what you're hearing. So they're not the full campaign tracks for the various different races. Um, that we've still got with um, some, some of the content, but not all of the content. So um, we have been going back through using this, this new uh, tool and updating some of the uh, mentioned races like Wood, Wood Elves, Beastmen, Dwarves, Bretonia. But there's no brand new battle tracks or campaign tracks. But, you know, that said, it's absolutely something that we'd love to do. So if the opportunity does present itself in the coming coming years or months, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look, look to try and do that because we all know that people love the audio in the game. Yeah, so Victory Ignitions, we've had, I think it's fair to say, a few stabs at those over the years. Uh, we've tried to rework them a few times in the past. Uh, Immortal Empires is no different. Um, so this time around, we've kind of tried to reimagine Victory Conditions quite a bit. Um, they're still uh, based on short, long and ultimate victories. Um, but now we've focused much more into being thematic um, based on who you play as. Um, so for a short Victory Condition, for example, uh, we now have yeah, factional Victory Conditions um, that are thematic to you know, who you play as. So an example would be uh, Lockyer. Um, if you play as Lockyer now, then your factional victory condition, which is part of your short victory condition, is to go and capture the Cathayan uh, ports along the east coast of Cathay. Um, then from there on out, you can kind of go on uh, and advance towards your long victory condition. Um, and that's where then you have racial victory conditions. So these are things that make sense for the race. You know, if I'm playing as Bretonia, what does it make sense for, for the race of Bretonia to try and work towards and aim for? 
um, and then from there you can go on to achieve your ultimate victory uh, and that ties into the end games so once your end game triggers um, that's when you can work towards achieving your ultimate victory which will be uh, yeah defeating the end game or just working around wherever the end game happens to be So actually from uh, Mortal Empires and our telemetry in Matrix, we can see that the AI actually were quite successful uh, uh, taking eight peaks. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't do more and we have done more for Mortal Empires. Um, so now, yeah, we've really focused in on the race um, for eight peaks in Immortal Empires. Uh, and what that means is we've moved to start positions of Belagar, Queek and Skarsnik. Um, so they're now, yeah, much more centered in on eight peaks. Um, so this should, yeah, hopefully, you know, be even better at achieving the fantasy the players really want to see, which is, yeah, all three of those uh, really vying for the peaks. So this is a really complicated topic, uh, something I probably talk about for hours, uh, and we don't have hours. Um, but one thing I'll say is there are a couple of things we've done for Immortal Empires. Um, so namely the victory conditions, um, and also the AI balancing and the economy balancing. They're all factors that go into answering this question about how do we keep people interested in their campaigns um, and playing for longer. Um, you can also ask yourself, you know, how long should a player play a campaign for? That's an interesting question. Um, and, you know, it's one that we're constantly trying to get the grips with and tackle. Um, so in Immortal Empires, we're kind of aiming for you to play your campaigns for a little bit longer. Um, that early game feeling that I think where people have the most fun in their campaigns, that's the bit that we're really trying to, you know, elongate uh, and keep going throughout, you know, more time in your campaign. Um, so, you know, you can expect more challenge um, for longer. Um, and yeah, hopefully, you know, people enjoy the results of the work that we have done in Mortal Empires. And this is something that's just always going to be ongoing for us from here. Yeah, so that's something that we've been looking at recently. Um, we're not going to be tackling it for the, the beta launch, but do know that it's something on our radar and that we'd like to address as we go for forward. Quite simply, no, they can't. Um, so yeah, I think you probably agree that if the Wood Elves lost their settlement through this, it would be a little bit harsh. Um, so we already have a system in place where uh, we stop this happening for certain settlements, such as the Cathay Gates. Um, so we've applied that now to the Wood Elf Forests, so yeah, there shouldn't be hopefully any <laughs> broken mechanics like that. So we have a lot of skill trees uh, in Immortal Empires, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Um, so we've tried our best to go over pretty much all skill trees and address some really like egregious examples of where things are outdated. That definitely doesn't mean we've covered every single skill tree. Um, I think, you know, going forward, this is going to be something that, um, yeah, we address not only in the beta, um, but also afterwards as well. Um, so again, another place we're really looking for feedback. Um, if you're not happy with a skill tree or a particular skill in a skill tree, um, let us know. And I think that's definitely something we can address going forward. But yeah, like I said, we tried to do a good pass over most skill trees. UI wise, um, we've gone with, the, gone with the direction that all factions will use the Warhammer 3 UI. Um, that said, we've actually introduced some new colours. So rather than being all red as we saw in Warhammer 3, we've got a couple of different colour um, variants in green and blue. And they're going to be available to you as the player to pick and choose what you want to do. We've also made it that it's friendly for modders as well, because you know we love what the modders get up to. So I, would, I wouldn't uh, be surprised if you see a lot of different options from them coming forward as well. So hopefully that's, that's something you want to see. Uh, so I can keep this quite simple. The answer is yes. There's way too much detail to answer right here. Uh, I'm sure in future blogs and future information releases or when you get your hands, you'll see all of the work um, that we've done for Empire and Vampire accounts. Um, I'll give you a little example of what we've done. So we've reworked the Vampire accounts tech tree um, and you can expect to see, you know, changes like that across not only the Empire and the Vampire accounts, but, you know, across most factions. Um, there's been like a lick of paint for, yeah, quite a few. So we've got no new monster hunts for Immortal Empires. Um, these take quite a bit of time to develop actually. Um, so yeah, they weren't really high on our priority list for Immortal Empires. Um, but as you will have seen in the past, um, for the Warhammer 2 monsters, uh, we did eventually go back and add those to the book. So uh, I've said this before, but never say never. 
Yeah, definitely. That 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 guy loves to go and uh, you know raid and pillage and get all the different creatures un, un, under his wing. So uh, expect to see things like uh, feral bears, ice bears, feral wyverns, saber tusks. I think a whole bunch of different stuff. Basically, content to do with Warhammer Three for him to uh, add, add to his army. But one that we aren't doing, in case people are going to ask later down the road, the elemental bear. No, that still stays with his his live. Well, we're delighted to announce that Immortal Empires is coming to you on August 23rd. Yeah, we're really excited for you to get your hands on it and we can't wait for all of your feedback. Thanks very much. <laughs>